channel. If you're new here, my name is Danny, and this is Coffee Break with Danny. Today we're gonna talk about products that sucked big butt. It's no mystery around here that I have a problem controlling my mouth. I say the first thing that comes to mind and it gets me into trouble. Luckily, I've been blessed to develop a very strong connection with all my loved ones where they understand that I'm just a through and through Sagittarius and I always, always mean well. So today, I wanna to preface this video by saying it is a good old throwback video where we talk about misses, but please keep in mind that being an Anagram 2 and a Sagittarius, I mean well at all times. However, sometimes I don't execute it properly. So if I say something that offends one of your tried and true holy grail favorite products, I do apologize. And if you've been on the fence to try one of these products, I will hold you back and save you from committing that mistake, but I will offer you friendly alternatives on products that are similar, but actually work. See what I did there? Man, this is like the Home Shopping Network. I got it all down pat. All right, today we're going to talk about misses. So if you wanna hear a long list of products that did not work for yours truly, all you have to do is keep on watching. First of all, special shout out to the best, most awesome oversized jacket find from Amazon. Y'all looking at my t-shirt, aren't you? Isn't that cute? It's for my friends as of Latte. They have like a t-shirt subscription service. They have really cute coffee merch. It's all about like coffee lover stuff. So they just sent me this t-shirt um, a few weeks ago. It was their February coffee lovers t-shirt of the month club or whatever. I wonder what the March one's gonna be. You're curious too, aren't you? Actually, you're probably just curious to see what's in the bin. So we're gonna bring out the bin of shame. This is what I like to call the bin of shit. No, I don't call it anything. It's just a very convenient place to keep my misses <laughs> for a while. So I am going to dump these out. You're gonna get a little sneak peek action of what's happening in here. And we're gonna talk about it. I don't think I have that many, which is kind of refreshing, which means this video, as opposed to being an hour long, will only be half an hour long. And that's what we're here for. So let's start off with the special year we've had, you know, it's been stressful, a lot of working from home, a lot of kids home from school. If we are humans by nature that put too much on our plate and then we're giving all of these other exterior stressors, it, we've obviously all as a whole had a more stressful time, more anxiety, more states of maybe sadness, confusion, depression, and if there's little things we could do here or there to alleviate some of that stress or tension, why not? So I, on one of my little shopping binges or experiments or research, I found or stumbled upon Not Pot. And Not Pot is a brand that gets discussed a ton on social media, especially by cruelty-free or vegan bloggers. They love this brand. And this brand is always sold out, you guys. I had to sign up for like the newsletter or something to get notified when these were back in stock. I hauled these a few months back and you could see my first impression, I was not a fan. And I'm not opposed to eating something that doesn't taste good, like I'm not, I'm not a child, you know? <laughs> I'll take my medicine. And so I'm okay with things that aren't super amazing, delicious perfection. However, I'm not a fan of something that claims to do something and doesn't. Now, I'm not saying that that's the case for everyone. In fact, that is not the case for everyone because several of these mentioned bloggers are actually bloggers that I follow and genuinely trust. So supplements and things like that are things that are case by case and not all of them will work for you, not all of them will work for everyone. So for me, this was a huge miss, not only in efficacy, but also in flavor. It is disgusting. Sorry guys, that was rude. But if you are looking for a suitable alternative on something that actually does work to chill you out or give you stress or tension relief, I have two recommendations. I have a budget friendly one and then I have a, are you ballin'? And then that one's for you. So the first one is Nature's Bounty Stress Comfort Peace of Mind for mild tension and stress. These are chewable gummies. You can only take two a day. I already took mine for today. The gummies look <laughs> the gummies look like that. They aren't the most 
pleasant color, but they actually are delicious and actually work. Parker and I both can attest to that. They definitely worked and they're not CBD products. I know a lot of people can be a little about that. I mean, they're not, it's a different kind of product, but this is an herbal supplement and it definitely worked. And this is definitely budget friendly. I think it's $20 for a hundred gummies. The one that does break the bank, but is also amazing is the Good Patch Be Calm. This is a hemp patch. It is a clear sticker that you place on the inside of your wrist and leave it on for 12 hours. This is magic. It is amazing. It definitely works, but they are very expensive. It's not something you could really afford to do every day. I don't care how Kim Kardashian you are. You know what I mean? So anyway, there's a miss. Those are two hits. Another miss that I was very surprised at was the Lauren Conrad Facial Cleanser. I tried her entire line of products and I was very impressed with the majority of them. In fact, I found new favorite products within her collection. But the cleanser is lame. Whack attack, it doesn't work, it doesn't cleanse, it doesn't do anything, there's nothing magical about it. It's something, it literally feels like you're washing your face with the basic hand soap. There is nothing magical about it, at least, at the very least, if it could smell good, I think that would, that would cheer me up. But nope, no scent, nothing. It is, I mean, they're hypoallergenic products. They're vegan, cruelty-free, they're mid-range priced products. I just didn't like it. I mean, there's so many cleansers out there in the market. Like right now, if you're gonna break into a market where there's already thousands and thousands and thousands of type of competitors like you gotta knock my socks off you know what I mean speaking of being underwhelming and not knocking my socks off the native bar soap this is a product that I tried as an alternative to body wash and it was such a miss Holy mackerel, I don't remember using bar soap being this traumatizing. Obviously I'm being dramatic. This bar soap leaves me feeling worse than if I didn't shower. It completely dries out my skin. It feels so yucky. The only benefit of it is that it actually smells pretty good. So if you guys are a fan of Native and you're a fan of the coconut vanilla scent, go for the body wash instead of the bar soap. And I can't remember if bar soap has that same effect, like all bar soaps have that same effect on people and I just got used to using body wash. But when I started to use this, I was like, holy crap. It's like, ee, 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 ee. like really, it made my skin dry out and feel stiff and taut. It was very bizarre. So I was like, hmm. I'm not made for that bar soap kind of life. All right, a brand as a whole, kind of. It is a gross generalization or a gross statement that I'm making, but a brand as a whole, I bought maybe six or seven products of this brand. I've so far tried four and didn't like all four. So I'm skeptical to try the remaining products because I was like, is my review going to be biased since I already don't like every single product I've liked or should I keep an open mind and still try it? Now, I spent the money, so I'm going to try it, but I will have to report back. But as far as today is concerned, we're going to talk about four misses of the brand Beekman 1802. I hauled uh, pretty much their entire skincare line from Ulta not too long ago, and I've slowly been incorporating the products into my routine, and I've slowly been taking them out of my routine as well. So the first product that I wanna to talk to you guys about is the Exfoliating Jelly Cleanser. This cleanser is by far one of the worst cleansers I've ever tried. Now, keep in mind that I like soapy facial cleansers when I'm washing my face. I know there are gentler cleansers that do not give you that sudsy effect. This one is a very bizarre formula. It comes out like a gel, and then when it touches water, it turns white and then just dissolves. It is very bizarre, but you do not feel like you are cleansing any part of your face. It is super, super weird. I've never experienced anything like this. I tried it for several weeks and I was like, sorry, can't do it. The other one is the Bloom Cream or Probiotic Moisturizer. These are hypoallergenic, sensitive type, allergen-free, it's like a healthy, 
skincare brand so it's never gonna smell like anything it's not heavily fragranced or anything but I was so underwhelmed with the quality texture results of this entire brand their packaging is pretty sexy I mean it's heavy it's like a smoky frosted glass you can see this is the serum these are the milk drop ceramide serum and you can see how beautiful the packaging is but it's just something where you feel like you're adding an extra step to your skincare routine but not getting any benefits usually when I use a product I know that it's working because I feel a difference or I see a difference with these I felt like I had just skipped steps and nothing happened so it was a little disappointing to go through that I also have the dewy eyed illuminating eye serum this one wasn't as bad as the other three it felt nice and it's nice that you could put it all over your orbital bone area but again I wasn't like wow this is amazing it's totally gonna replace my ordinary eye serum it, it, it really doesn't with how many products there are on the market now you really have to make something that is like wow that's amazing I could feel the difference I could recommend this to my friends and that's not a product that did that at all in fact I'm recommending to my friends that they don't buy it <laughs> the same goes with the Indie Lee I waken eye serum I hauled this either at Sephora or like at a local green beauty shop here in Dallas I used it about halfway you guys can tell and again I was underwhelmed I didn't see any big difference any deep puffing any feeling like crazy feeling of being moisturized any anti wrinkle properties anything significant where I could be like wow when I don't use it I really notice the difference that happens to me with the ordinaries I serum I think it's called caffeine something it's a it's a it's serum specifically for your eyes if I go a day without it I know I didn't use it that day that's the kind of stuff I want to see in my life and this one just was underwhelming and fell flat so I will link two eye serums that I completely love in the description box below the Shaba eye complex from drunk elephant is amazing and then the ordinary's eye serum I think it's like eight dollars also amazing plus like 10% of the price of the other one all right moving on to a hair product when I tell you that this hair product ruined my day I'm not being dramatic it literally ruined my day this is the IGK's first class charcoal detox dry shampoo a deep cleansing level detoxifying oil erasing scalp soothing dry shampoo all right I'm so glad I got this for free as a sample from Sephora it's one of those like bonus size massive sam deluxe samples from Sephora and you guys know I have a lot of hair but it is very thin and it is super greasy I mean I'm trying to hide right now what's happening under this amazing messy bun this product made my hair feel so much worse than it was before I tried to remedy how bad it was before using it. <laughs> so if I wanted to fix a problem that existed, it made the problem 10 times worse. That's not what you want. Like, I understand if something doesn't improve your life, but it doesn't make it worse. You know, this one didn't improve my life, but it did make it worse. In fact, it ruined my morning so bad that I had to wash my hair. I was like, I can't live like this. It was like, sticky gross heavy grody chalky sticky like powdery but dense it was horrendous you guys it was terrible I think this is one of those products that will only change your life if you have very thick heavy amazing hair that can hold that amount of heavy product my hair can't even hold basic hairspray okay <laughs> very few dry shampoos work on my hair without completely weighing it down or making it look worse so this I should have known better you know when it was like intense super heavy duty max deep cleansing like super crazy whatever detoxifying oily racing scalp shooting deep cleansing level charcoal detox like I should have I should have known better but yet I'm like God give me a sign and God's like boom and I'm like okay <laughs> That's me. All right, you guys, we are almost done. Three more products. 
I talked about this before and I'm talking about it again. I promised that I was gonna finish it, but I cannot. I cannot because I discovered such a great alternative to this product. The EOS Evolution of Smooth Cream Shaving Cream, like for super dry skin, the one that comes in the squeeze tube, not the pump, is amazing. This is not. I can't get the hype behind it. I can't understand it. I don't see it as soothing. In fact, it makes my legs not feel the best. It's kind of slimy and gelatinous. It's the Tree Hut Tahitian Vanilla Bean Moisturizing Shave Oil. I know a lot of influencers try this in other scents as well and they love it. For me, it was a big, big miss. I said I would finish it and I'm pretty sure I got about halfway and I'm like, and I'm out. Can't do it, y'all, I can't, I can't. I know I promise, but mm -mm. call me, don't play that. I'm sorry. A product that pains me to mention because one, it is a brand I love, and two, because I can see it working, just not for me, and that makes me salty. The Sol de Janeiro Triple Brazilian Butter Hair Repair Treatment with Sol Seal Technology. Y'all. <clears throat> this stuff is so heavy duty that if you have fine baby hairs like I do, it is way too powerful. That's the best way I could describe it. So this is a hair treatment mask. It smells just like all the Boom Boom cream products. It smells amazing. However, I have very thin hair. I would say if I were to classify the Sol de Janeiro hair care line, it's perfect for those that have thick, coarse, curly hair or dry scalp, dry hair, dry dryness in their hair. I have an excessive amount of oil. <laughs> so the Sol de Janeiro hair care line in general overall is perfect for those that have dry, coarse, curly hair because y'all can carry product. This is a product that made a huge difference in my hair, but it made too much of a difference. So it was too heavy of a product for my hair. It's just a product that for hair like me, almost causes like a buildup sensation on my hair. It's too much, it's too heavy, it's just too strong. So will you see a difference in shine and texture? Absolutely. Will you see a difference immediately? I don't think immediately, but after the second and third time that I used it, I was like, wow. After the third, I was like, this is too much. So it almost makes my hair just kind of clump together. It is that moisturizing, but you could definitely see a benefit if you guys have very thick or coarse hair. So it is a product that I do recommend. It is not a product that is friendly for those of you that have fine hair like I do or hair that is overly moisturized, aka greasy AF. So if you guys want a hair mask that is good for thin hair, fine hair, the Briogeo Don't Despair Repair Hair Mask is so friendly. I mean, you could do root to tip and that would never weigh my hair down. Now the last product that I'm gonna mention before I say goodbye kind of makes me sad because I noticed a difference, but the discomfort is so much more than actually the difference that it makes. You know, like one outweighs the other. The discomfort outweighs the benefits of having long lashes. So a few months ago, I hauled the Grande Lash MD Lash Enhancing Serum. It looks like this. It's a product that you have to use for, you know, several, several, several weeks to actually notice a difference. Y'all, I rallied. I rallied so hard and I started to notice a difference pretty quickly in the process, but it is a product that causes me irritation. And for me to say that, really hurts my heart because I'm a thug y'all. I don't have sensitive skin. I don't, I'm not a complainer. Like things don't irritate me. I'm not someone that, you know, can't have dairy. Like I'm not sensitive anywhere except in my heart. And <laughs> my gosh, I couldn't figure out. I'm like, oh, why well, my eyes itchy or what? Why don't my eyes feel goopy? Like why am I eyes feel tired today? And there are so many different symptoms associated with the use of this serum that I was like, I really can't keep putting myself through this. <laughs> Long lashes aren't worth it. 
And listen, if I had smaller eyes that really didn't encompass like 50% of my face, maybe I'd take the risk. But y'all, my eyes are so big. I look like Kuropi, okay? And so for me to be suffering with like dry, itchy eyes or irritation, like it's too much. I can't hide it from you guys. So this is a product that I can say, hey, yeah, it actually does work. However, it did cause me insane irritation. It was weird because it wasn't like, I didn't get, like some people complained about having like a rash or little blisters around the root of their lashes or it wasn't anything like that. It was just like something in my eyes, like really itchy and like my eyes would feel like, like there was a film on them or like something was there and it was like thinking about it now, I'm like, it, it, it reminds me of the discomfort and it sucks because my lashes got longer. So if you guys have a lash serum that you recommend, has good reviews, that has worked out for you, maybe one that's not $100, that you guys can recommend, please let us know in the comment section below because several of you tried Grande Lash and when I hauled it, you mentioned having some problems with it as well. So if you got, have I had this crazy hair this whole video and like nobody told me? Come on, you guys. I thought we were friends here. So if you guys have tried a lash serum that has worked for you and hasn't caused you any weird side effects, irritation, itchiness, bumpiness, discoloration, I don't know, change of eye color, um, let us know in the comment section below because I know a ton of us would appreciate that kind of tip. Anyway, anyway, I think that's it for these misses. I will make sure to list and link the misses and the alternatives in the description box below. If you guys have any input, suggestions, recommendations, maybe alternatives to some products that I tried, any feedback, agreement, disagreement, hey, let's talk about it in the comment section below. And if you had a good time, if you learned something, if you're like, heck yeah, I'm excited to try those gummies on Amazon them already, uh, make sure to hit that like, share, and subscribe button because I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a ton of their recommendations that I make that you're gonna be curious to try. You're welcome in advance. I love you guys so much, and you know what to do. If you found this video useful, entertaining, and learned something, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, this coffee break is over. Bye, guys.